G'day guys, and today Shorty and I are going to do a review of the game with Geelong up against North Melbourne at Etihad Stadium, which was on the Saturday night. It was a pretty good game of footy, mate. Pretty fiery at times as well. Uh, umpiring decisions, maybe not going to the way of North, and uh, yeah, it was... The spectators weren't too happy at uh, various points in time, but neither was Brent Harvey. No, no, <laughs> after a bit of a bit of a push and shove, but no, Geelong played some pretty good footy, close to a full quarter performance, and one of the best performances of, of the season for them, definitely. Uh, they got home in the end by thirty two points. Shorty, uh, you were doing a bit of work at the time, I'd imagine, and uh, yeah. watching in on the game. Um, how, did, how did you see it? Yeah, no, I did see all of it. Just Oh, it's good. A <laughs> um, bit of riding at half-time and that. But no, we, we were very good, that's for sure. And North got pretty rattled, and we cashed in on that. Um, not quite firing on all cylinders yet, but it's certainly it is building, and it's a nice time to be building into the season with finals coming up. Mm. And... Uh, you know, we so often talk like sides seem to drop matches that they shouldn't and uh, it's happened a fair bit over the last couple of months, but we just haven't yet. We keep um, delivering when we should Yeah. and North had all to play for, as did we, and we came out on top, so that was really good. So really priming to that top form, which is really good to see. Yeah, I, I, f- yeah. I feel like we're sort of uh, getting to, get, right, stepping in the right direction pretty yeah. much and uh, yeah. uh, it's... Pretty promising, obviously. I think I'm probably write him off after the Gold Coast game. I'll probably still stand by it, but I'm more confident at Geelong and a flag maybe this week after the win against North than maybe the loss after Gold Coast. But yeah, still, oh yeah, game mate. I mean, fair enough too. I mean, by no means is North a massive win, and we're you know flag favourites or anything. But it's it's looking much better than it did after that match. Yeah, no, I'm pretty happy with the performance, but yeah, I think Hawthorne and Sydney are probably still definitely a class above us at this point in time, but maybe not against Hawthorne because, yeah, we, we seem to go all right against them, match up pretty well. Mm. Sydney would be the interesting one. I don't think we'll want to play them away in the finals if well, that would happen, but yeah. I mean, all you can do at this point, whether you're playing your best footy or not, all you can do is win to position yourself as good a chance as you can to have a tilt at the flag. And at the moment, Definitely. we're doing that. You know, we're, we're going to play sides that will allow us to give us a crack at top two because we'll play the Hawks later in the year. Yeah. So we're putting ourselves in a good position and if we're playing good enough footy in the finals, then we'll benefit from that. If we're not, we'll be knocked out wherever we finish. So Absolutely, we're yeah. setting ourselves up well. Alrighty, well, yeah, I, I thought North started off relatively well. They started off better than us. We were under <clears> the pump <throat> during the first quarter, but... Yeah, North uh, didn't quite take their chances, and I think that really helped us. Scoreboard pressure is the best pressure in the game, as, as they say, yeah. and perceived pressure is right up there too, I'm sure. <laughs> Which I felt North had at times uh, when Geelong really uh, sort of put the foot to the pedal, sort of players panicking, just kicking, hacking it to nowhere, and just mm. out of the danger zone. And you know you're not doing well when you get it out of defence like that. No. But, um, uh, so impressed with, with uh, when we, the way we performed. It was just uh, so good to watch. I liked. I really liked how we consistently went through the corridor. That was even when we were under the pump, we still just backed ourselves in. weren't a hundred percent great uh, by foot all the time, but the fact that uh, you know we made a mark by doing it, and I'm glad. Yeah, we just kept uh, going with what we know goes well for us. Yeah, that's cat's footy, isn't it? Oh, and, uh, at its finest, yeah. you got to take that risk because um, you're not going to win too many matches against good sides playing safe footy, so it was good no, to that's see. that's right, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. And also, the pressure was just awesome, probably towards the later stages of the first quarter. Really put the foot to the pedal, as I sort of mentioned, and yeah, um, yeah eventually probably created a bit of perceived pressure in North players just sort of rushing it. But we had a bit of that old mongrel Geelong about us where mm. that tenacity was back and that desire for the contest and just getting to that tackle was really there where maybe in previous weeks it hasn't and throughout the season hasn't quite been there so that was a certainly a positive for us as well mm. and obviously uh, during the second quarter I'm pretty sure it was uh, North simply just lost the plot yeah brain fade wasn't it they just the whole team it started at their best player and just followed straight through it definitely and you nearly felt like as a supporter that you, we nearly had it if you go back to uh, maybe a few weeks ago against the Hawks North Melbourne uh, well more or less Brian Lake uh, yeah didn't quite uh, yeah have his <laughs> best moments and 
uh, North really cashed in, and it's almost like if you have that kind of brain fade, it puts you off big time. Yeah, it's pretty tough, and still with North having a few inexperienced players as well, and like their midfield, while it's it's pretty close to a really elite midfield, they maybe struggled with Harvey, um, you know, being so frustrated and they couldn't quite turn it around in time. Absolutely, yeah. And just, yeah, great, great all round, close to a full quarter perform- performance and I hope we continue this form over through the finals. I mean, we can't yeah. can't do much here as a supporter when we're not, <laughs> we're not out in the park, uh, you know, deciding the result, but we can either put our foot forward and just, uh, yeah. Yeah, hope's about as all we got as a supporter, unfortunately, but we can barrack hard. <laughs> oh, definitely, mate. Yeah, so probably that's all for the review at the moment. We'll uh, go into the votes anyway. Uh, Who do you have in your top three, mate? Yeah, I gave Mitch Duncan three votes. Superstar. Yeah, he's just fantastic, isn't he? He's featured in quite a few of my votes, I think, and I think he'll be right up there in the best and fairest once the season comes to a finish. And yeah, uh, been so consistent. He has, hasn't he? And he kicked the three goals, 24 touches. He was just he's so consistent and played his best footy when it mattered, like in the heat of the match. So He does. That's why I gave him the three, and um, Sal got my two. Nothing too strange about that. He was at his best, plenty of tackles, plenty of touches, inside the 50s, all the tough stuff he does. He was fantastic, won the clearances as well. I think he had about five there, so... He did a good job. Yeah, two votes went his way. And Josh Caddy, I gave the one to. I actually um, didn't look at the stats through the match, but um, looked at the end and he only had 18, but it felt like he had a bigger impact on the match than that, so... Definitely. Eight marks next to his name and a couple of good clunks. Yeah, and I think he laid like seven tackles as well, and half his touches were contested, so a nice snap around the body as well. But I just thought his game, like Mitch Duncan, was at its best in the heat of the match, certainly in the first half as well. So mm, definitely. That's why I gave him the uh, one vote there. But uh, how about yourself? Who did you give the votes to? Well, I went with Joel Selwood for the three votes. Uh, it was pretty clear cut with probably who made the top three. It was sort of a top five that was pretty much penciled in. Yeah. But yeah, uh, Joel Selwood uh, gets a three for mine anyway. And he got the 29 disposals, took the 12 marks, and also uh, capped it off with a goal. And I think he got five free kicks as well. He, he was uh, doing a bit of ducking, but, I mean, they were there as well, so... Yeah. You can't uh, rip his head off, can you? So. Oh, no, it's, <laughs> it's, if it's there, it's there. You yeah. pay it. Um, just an outstanding leader, and, yeah, he just, he just keeps soldiering on, even though he's had a bit of a poor poorer season where he's had been a bit up and down, but I uh, just love the way he goes about it. So, yeah, Selby gets a three for mine. Two votes to Mitch Duncan, the potential Geelong best and fairest. You, you never know. There'll yeah. be a few up there, but... He got the 24 disposals, got the eight marks, and he also kicked three goals. And like Shorty just mentioned, when it really counts and yeah, when uh, the whips get cracking, he just yeah. knows what to do. And he just kicks goals from pretty much anywhere. Like He's one of the better shots at goal, I think, we've got at the club. And yeah, he just does some amazing stuff. He's not the flashiest player to have ever existed, but he just does the basics so well. Yeah, I was just watching the footy show this morning, the Sunday one, and Nathan Brown talked. He put him in the uh, developing midfield as a Geelong well. Oh, no why? He's well and truly developed, Nathan. No. He, he's there. He's all class, isn't he? Definitely. He sure is. You just wonder, would you say he's an A grader, B, B plus? I'd, I'd say he's an A grader. A yeah. grader, yeah. yeah. I think with the amount of times he's got votes, you just have, just about have to put yeah, him in there. Yeah, I think you get more recognised as... Uh, People start to realise it who don't see the cats every week. But. Yeah, definitely. Well, yep, so Duncan uh, gets the two for mine. And the one vote to Alan Christensen. Back after a bit of a flu the other week. Uh, did did some really good things. Got the 29 disposals, four marks, and uh, he also chimed in with a goal in the end. Uh, it was a very important one, too, in the last quarter, kicking the first goal of the final mm. quarter. And um, that nil, well, probably not sealed it, but uh, certainly yeah, it made it tough for him. Yeah, so I, I was really impressed with his output, particularly after the horrible week. The flu is never nice. and <laughs> Yeah, so it seems like Christensen's getting back into some pretty good form and obviously the more games under his belt, he'll just keep improving. And yeah, I think he'll be quite beneficial come finals time. Just another midfielder to sort of pick up the slack for Stevie J or maybe sell it if they're getting you know a bit of a tag or yeah. whatever. And I think that'll be really helpful. So hopefully that uh, goes to plan. And... Yeah, so uh, those are the players we've given votes to. We'll move on to the chopping block, uh, Shorty's favourite segment of the show, because <laughs> he, 
He's obviously the man in charge. <laughs> <laughs> Who have you got for us, mate? Yeah, like we've been saying, and there was an article in the paper that this is Geelong's best side they can probably put out in the park, and that's pretty true. There's not a whole heap of players in the reserves that should be playing AFL footy. Um, mm, definitely. I saw Schroeder was the best. He's um, he's playing pretty good footy in the twos, but I uh, yep. doubt there's a spot for him at the moment. But as far as the chopping block, Dawson Simpson just continues to drive me insane. Um, was he horrible or was he horrible? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know he's not going to have a massive influence on the match himself, but he just let Goldstein do as he plays, and uh, yeah. that was pretty disappointing. Highly um, alarming, yeah. Yeah, whether McIntosh was unfit or not, or whether it was just a bit of a rest or not, I think um, you know McIntosh needs to play, and can you afford to play both? We'll wait and see, um, maybe against certain rough combinations, but... Simpson was disappointing, given he had an opportunity to play some good footy. Um, and the other man that was a little disappointing was Shane Kirsten, I felt. Oh, oh, oh boy. <laughs> yeah, like, there's no one else to put in his place, let's be honest. I think Mitch Brown yeah. kicked four in the um, reserves, but he can't play AFL. Well, um, he kicked nine against Ballarat last year at some point and kicked yeah. a point the next week or something. Yeah, so. I mean, he's blown his chance as far as I'm concerned. And Walker's the other one who's shown his... Probably not up to it at this point. So Kirsten, at times he does enough, but last night he didn't. I think it was only five touches, one yeah. mark. And a goal. And a goal. It was, on was the goal an absolute give me. So yeah. he's a bit frustrating and it puts a lot of pressure on Hawkins, but we'll persist with him because he's the best option at the time. Mm. He has potential, that's for sure, but um, I don't think we'll be seeing it this year, which could be a, no. a flaw in the Cats' side. But uh, couldn't see too many changes for the side Obviously, McIntosh will probably be one, yeah. depending on they're listed as an ankle. I mean, who knows <laughs> yeah. uh, with the cat sometimes. Definitely. But uh, I know uh, putting your coaching hat on, mate, uh, for next week as far as the uh, chopping block, I know you had some thoughts on Harry Taylor potentially. Yeah, I do. Uh, we've got Fremantle next week, and I'll touch on that pretty soon. Um, yeah. Pav might play. I think they said he, he's all clear to play, whether he really is physically fit or not doesn't mm. really matter but they mate he's mainly the the main man down forward mm. for the dockers and obviously I, I think Tommy Lonigan usually plays on him but he's their only seemingly big forward Zach Clark might go up there every now and again but I reckon uh, Harry Taylor should take a bit of a move to the forward line maybe there's a bit of a swap up yeah whether you keep cursing uh, in the side or not I, I reckon uh yeah, Harry could be a bit of an X factor for the Cats. Throw something different at Fremantle. Harry Taylor normally goes up forward late uh, against Fremantle when we sort of had nothing else on offer and just a one last roll of dice kind of thing. I, I reckon he could maybe cause a few problems for Ross and, and obviously the Dockers' defence, who hasn't been in great form as of late. Sort of only getting over the line against Carlton. So I, I think maybe Scotty goes with uh, something a little bit different there. Mm. And Harry, obviously, yeah, he, he can kick goals. I mean, I think he kicked six against the Giants, like, oh, might have been two years ago. And, yeah, he, he just he just pops up and no, he, I like he, it. He, he kicks well, so. I do like the thinking because, uh, you know, Freo have strangled us in the past. Definitely. And yep. you can see Kirsten getting bogged down and Hawkins likewise. Um, so, no, I like the thinking. Something a bit different. Yeah. The mix of tools that they'll go with, not sure that could affect it. Um, but it'll be interesting and something that could be a nice ace at the sleeve in a few weeks' time. Absolutely. Yeah. So pretty much moving on to next week, which we've sort of already elaborated on. Um, we've got Fremantle at Simmons Stadium. Freo got over the line against Carlton on the Thursday night by five points. It was a... Well, they stole it, really. Like we stole it against Carlton. Same margin. Yeah. Same sort of circumstances. But, yeah, it's going to be tough. It's I mean, when do you get an easy game against Fremantle? Uh, they yeah they have won four of the last five against us and have also included one in the final last year which I went to and uh, <laughs> kissed fifty bucks goodbye down the drain to very uh, well spent <laughs> oh oh I just couldn't believe my eyes <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah they they seemingly have a bit of the wood over us at the moment we beat them early in two thousand thirteen albeit against a pretty undermanned yeah. uh, Frio side as we mentioned a few weeks ago had a, had a fair few stars out and. Uh, Obviously, they did rest a fair chunk of players the week before they played us. And they got thrashed by St Kilda. Pretty much put half their two side out there. For, yeah, they just, did, didn't they? Just to um, yeah, keep us uh, on our toes. And they clearly outrun us. Didn't help uh, with Josh Walker playing and 
no Hawkins and Hawkins injured kind of thing. Could have made a bit of a difference, but hey, it's been done and dusted. Yeah. So I think it's really tough to tell at the moment. Freo aren't in awesome form. Been a little bit shaky the last couple of weeks. And yeah, I, I think we could probably get the job done. I, yeah. I'll, I said earlier in the year, I'll tip Fremantle for this game, <laughs> but you know, circumstances definitely changed. And honestly, I don't think I'd be surprised if Freo won. Ross is sometimes just that kind of bloke that just flicks the switch like maybe the Cats can do sometimes. So, yeah, yeah uh, I'll, what are your thoughts, mate? What do, you, what do you think we can do yeah, come, with the week coming up? It'll be pretty interesting, that's for sure. I mean, you're right, Freo aren't in the best of form. They're struggling without Walters. I think, um, you know, he's such a big part of their side. Yeah, he's been out all season, but it's just starting to struggle with him at the moment for whatever reason. Definitely. Possibly with Pav going down last week was a good reason for that. But um, yeah. will he get up? Not sure. No, Bazungu won't get up. And Luke McFarlane, he's not the player that he once was at the moment. It's been yeah. a whisper that his injury, I think it's a calf or something, but oh. he's not quite at his best. So a bit of a weak link there, potentially. But yeah, the Dockers, it's never an easy game against them. Nah, that's wrong. It's a big game. So many big games towards the end of the season, that's for sure. It's always tough to come down to Simmons Stadium, so it will be again. I mean, I know they've got a good record there. I think we can get the job done as well, purely on form. You expect them to be up and about as well, but we are playing pretty good footy, like we've discussed already, yeah, where yeah. the Dockers are not so much. If this was a final, I'd be pretty concerned, but I just feel with a few injuries and uh, form for the Dockers, it might be uh, favouring us here. Yeah. But it's, it's an important one because we do need to keep winning, especially that top two is on offer. Yeah, And this is definitely. one match that, uh, you know, job's not done. We beat North, well done. But this is a pretty tough game as well against a side that tends to get on our nerves a bit and gets under our skin, which not many sides have done in the past. No, it's yeah. spot on there, mate. Uh, why, why would you be concerned if it was a final? Well, just because it's, it's an actual big match. Like, it actually means something. I mean, I know this means a lot for Freo as well, but nothing means more than a final. And I just feel... If it was a final, they would have, um, you know, maybe rested McFarlane or, or yeah. primed themselves for this match. You know, More coming than us, maybe. Yeah, yeah, potentially. But um, you know, it's round twenty. It's uh, you know, it's a big game for both clubs, but it's nothing like a final, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, but you're right. Last year, Hawkins was struggling, and Walker struggled big time in the final. So. It's a different Ford setup from 12 months ago. Definitely. Yeah. yeah it's changed a bit. But, uh, yeah, yeah th- those are some thoughts from Shorty and myself on the game with Geelong in North Melbourne at Etihad Stadium. Cats got the job done pretty nicely in the end. Like the video if you enjoyed it, by the way, and uh, comment your thoughts on the game. Maybe even you uh, have a bit of a chopping block yourself. <laughs> See who, who's uh, not quite performing well. But, yeah, and uh, don't forget to subscribe to us. We... Uh, Love dishing out this content to you guys, and obviously, yeah, we'll have mostly have a video out either late Sunday night or on the Monday, and uh, usually uh, another AFL related video on the Thursday. So yeah, subscribe to uh, get onto that, and yeah, don't forget to check out my mate Dari Joe, who does the Geelong Goal video highlights each week. Does a sensational job, week in week out, a bit like Joel Selwood, <laughs> maybe a few other cat stars yeah. there, but. Uh, go, go and check him out and also subscribe to him. Uh, thanks heaps for sticking around, guys, and we'll see you all soon.